Hey everyone, so today we are gonna talk about how to trim a vase or a bottle. Like how do you get this stuck back down on the wheel? Cause if you see when we stick it down, right? And we just start trimming, it's just gonna tip over and fall off. So I'm gonna talk to you about how to use a chuck, how to stick it down. Today also I'm gonna talk to you about how do we clean up this form a little bit because we threw it, but sometimes it has a little bumps and bumps. It's not quite the right form that we wanted. So I'm also gonna show you how you clean up the top part of this form. All right. So that's all gonna happen right now. Let's show you how to trim one of these. All right, so now I have my pot and you'll notice that when we try to stick it on the wheel, right? Like we would a cup or anything, I could try to put wads of clay down here, but this neck is just too narrow. When I apply any sort of pressure, it's just gonna wanna tip over and fall off. Mm, that's not gonna work. So we're gonna use something called a chuck. But first, let's deal with the top part and this part. If there's any alterations that need to be done here, this is the time to do it because we have a lot of mass down here and this is really wide. So we can do the work, if I center it up right here right now, we can do the work that we need to do up here right now and then we can flip it over and put the foot on. And once we put the foot on, it's gonna be too narrow for us to do a lot of this work on later. So we just do our best job that we can for centering this. So the main part that I'm concerned about is getting this part right. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. So I'm gonna center it up based upon this shoulder right here where my finger is. So every time it moves away from my finger, I'm gonna try to tap it in. Oop. This is a little bit dry, so it's sticking just a little bit more than what I would want it to. So it's a little bit hard to get centered. We'll get it though. So that's pretty good. So now I'm not too concerned about this part, this part, um, the top part. So now let's stick her down to the wheel. I have some clay here. I like to use these three blobs, right? I love working on the wheel and working um, like this, right? I just love it. It has something to do with the way how I was taught, right? I just love doing the self-centering and tap tenor, no, not the tap centering and just this part of it, I just love it. It's so much fun. So now it's centered and you can see basically the form is pretty good, but there may be a little bit of issues where there's a little bit of throwing lines left here, something like that. So now I need my metal rib, which was here just a second ago and they got lost into the ether of, oh, here it is. So I have this little metal rib that I can use. So I'm gonna use this a little bit like a trimming tool. So what do I mean? So I'm gonna take this, and so there are some lumps and bumps here on the form, and this isn't too bad, right? But what I wanna do is, let's say you wanna create a very smooth with a very continuous form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend this rib a little bit and make sure it's kind of perpendicular to the wheel, I mean, to the clay surface, and I'm just gonna start using this like a trimming tool. So you can see the white areas are where it's trimming off more than the other areas, right? So these dark areas it hasn't trimmed. So these, the light areas are the high spots. The dark areas are the areas where it is, um, the dark areas are where it's not trimming yet. So let's see if we can get you a different angle so you can actually see what the tool is doing from the backside. So here I'm bringing the tool in and then you can see that, you see how the tool is trimming off clay right there. And I'll do this all the way down and it's, you see that? And then, so I want to create a beautiful, smooth surface all the way down. Now, when you get better at making bottles, you'll have that surface already, right? So if I make bottles for a while, I'll have already a really smooth surface, but a lot of people, you know, still will do this, right? So I believe in doing any technique you need to do to get the types of things that you want, right? So I will do this if the bottle looks a little bit like this, where it's a little bit liney. Like that, so you see how this part now is, looks perfectly smooth. I didn't really need to take off hardly any clay. This part, I'll keep doing this part. The part that's way down here, I'm gonna trim that a little bit anyway, so I'm not gonna do that part. I'm just gonna do down to maybe this midpoint here, the wide point right here. So I'm just gonna trim this up. So I'm cleaning up the, this side of the bottle first, right? You see that, letting that do its thing. There we go. See those little chunks of clay falling off? So I'm hardly taking anything off because this bottle is already pretty, pretty good. This is a little bit like a vase slash bottle. It's not really a bottle form, right? It's more of a vase form, I think, but I'm still calling it a bottle, I guess. Here we go, there. So it's pretty good, like I'm almost there. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is so subtle. 
right there. That is so subtle that it does. I can't even feel it. Right. So now um, I want to make sure I want to make sure that surface looks a little bit trimmed. So I don't really like it that it looked trimmed. I want it to still look like it's thrown. So I may do this. I may wet the surface down just a little bit with just a little bit of water like that. Wet it down. And then what I'm going to do is instead of holding this this rib at a right angle, I'm going to let it lay flat and do this. So this will be like a burnishing the surface, right? So here I'm just letting it lay flat against there, right? So let's do it. From, so you see how flat that rib is running against the thing, right? And I'm actually letting the rib, I'm actually letting the rib bow and flex down like that. You see that? I can lay it and then let it flex that way. You guys see that? It's a little bit hard to see. There you go. Yeah. So I'm letting it flex down like that. So as I do this, this will make the surface look like it was thrown again. It really just really just compacts that surface down and makes it just look really beautiful. Like so I'm trying to erase the fact that I kind of did some like uh kind of trimming with my rib. Okay. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. See how much smoother and beautiful that really looks. It looks really good. So I'm laying it flat. So there we go. Looks pretty good. So now I can just take my sponge. So there is a little bit of stuff going on here. I can just take my sponge and smooth that out from the outside. Let sponge and time do that. So I'm trying to use the driest sponge that I can. Like it's still wet, but I'm not really trying to waterlog the thing. And on the inside, there's some marks here too, where I can clean those marks up by sponging it off on the inside too. Just letting time and our, just letting time and spinny time just to kind of help smooth all that out, right? It's a little bit out of round, but that's okay. Out of round is, I mean, it's not completely like all in agreement with each other, right? But you see how much nicer that looks, right? I'm not trying to wet the piece down. I'm just trying to smooth it out some. There we go. And then I could just wrap it around the rim a little bit, make sure that's happy and smooth. So that is looking really good. I'm very happy with that part. Now we get to flip it over and talk about how we're gonna trim this guy. So here we have this, right? So what we would generally use, I like to use as a chuck. Now I have some ceramic things that I've thrown that will work as chucks, but maybe you don't have one, right? So I'm assuming that you guys haven't made bottles that much or vases that much before but you need something to hold it down, right? If I just try this and put clay down there, it's gonna be really tippy, really hard to trim this because all the weight is sitting up high and this isn't very wide. So we need something that we call a chuck. Let me clean off my wheel here for a second. And we need something that we call a chuck. So normally I would, I have these ceramic cylinders around, but I'm assuming that you don't have those. So you just gotta find something that will hold the bottle, right? So this will hold my bottle, right? Because it's long enough that the neck will fit down inside, right? Without touching the bottom. And then this has a collar, right? This will fit the bottle. And so this now is, since it's so much wider, is much less tippy, right, for the pot. So you see it's actually solid. Now, sometimes if you're making these objects and this is really light like this, then what I will do is I'll drop some clay inside and mash it on the inside. And that will just give this a little bit of weight down there, right? So let's, let's drop even more clay than that in there. there. This will just help add some weight to this light plastic thing and help move the center of gravity down a little bit, okay? So let's center this up really fast. So tap centering is a very useful skill to know, right? So I just need to get it close to center. It doesn't have to be 100% center because I'm going to rework that here in a second, right? So it doesn't matter. Now, this is really sharp and may mark my pot. So I'm actually going to take uh, some pieces of clay and mush it on to the rim just to keep from my pot from getting marked up, right? From the cutting of this, right? Because this is so sharp. And I have some foam that I use normally as well, but we're not gonna do the foam one today. We're just gonna use the clay up here. And this will help hold it in place as well, depending on what sort of plastic object you're using. Now we'll flip, put it over. So you wanna try to put your pot down as level as possible. What do I mean? Meaning that it's not going in at an angle like that. You wanna try to make it flat as it goes in. Now, the good thing about having this clear is you can see that part, but normally this is opaque. So how do I know if it's flat? Well, when you put it in and you come close to it here, is this spinning around? So you see how that is not flat. That side is definitely lower 
than this other side. So I want to tip this guy so that this side comes down. So I want to tip it this way. So I'll just pick the whole pot up for a second and tip it back and then let it settle back down again and then see. But after a while, it gets hard to see, but you can still see it's still a little bit messed up. So we want to take a level, which is right here. This is the fast way to do it, is I have a little bubble level here. And you can see, you could see that, you could kind of see where that bubble is. It's actually, where is the bubble? It's way, oh, this way is pretty level, right? So that way is pretty level, but then we'll turn it that way. And this way is way off. The bubble is way over here. Right, so it's hard for you guys to see, but the bubble is way over here. So I need to tip this side up. So I'll just lift it up out of the chuck for a second and tip it till it comes back down, till it's about level. Okay, so this only works if your wheel head is level. If your wheel head is not level, then the bubble level system won't work. So here, and then let's go back this way again and see if it's still level. It's This is off, way off, so it needs to come needs to come this way. So it's this side is too high. So we'll pick it up for a second and tip it, bubble level it over a little bit. And this will help get us really close. Sometimes it doesn't get us quite right, but this will get us close. And I go back and check. So that should be pretty close. So let's go back. So I've checked this way and I've checked this way with my little bubble level. And you can get these at the hardware store for super cheap. I think I get this for two bucks maybe or less than a dollar, right? And you just go and ask for levels. Where are the levels, right? So let's go back in here. Let's take a look at if it's level now when I spin. Ooh, see how close it is? So you see as far as up and down, it's not very far off. Uh, it's more about this way that's off, right? So if you look at it, it's pretty level this way. You see that? But it's more this way. So now I have to recenter it again. So I'm going to take this and tap it to recenter it. So when I tap these, when I tap these, I'm going to tap from way down at the bottom. Okay, because if I tap up here at the pot, it's going to knock my pot off. So I want to tap way down here at the bottom. There, that's pretty close. And then once I get it close to level, there may be a little, um, once I get it close to in the middle, there may be a little bit of, a little bit last, little wavery that around this way that I need to take care of. So this, you could use your needle tool and do a scratch method. So you see how it's scratching more on this side here. Let's bring this close in, right? So you see that scratching more on this side. So, and this side is low. So you see there's no scratch there. So I'm gonna tip this side lower. So this may take you a few different times to get exactly right. So here, this side is still high. And I know that you can't really see it very well, but Trust me, that side is still high, so I moved it over. Let me erase those old lines. So this is the other way you can do it if you don't have a bubble level, right? You could just keep doing it this way. So that's looking pretty close all the way around. You see, I almost made a circle. It's maybe this side is just a little high, so we'll tip that back a little bit. Then I'm gonna level it out. So it's looking pretty good. It's feeling pretty good, but it got a little bit out of round, right? So then I'll re-round it again. There we go. So that should be it. I should be right on the money, right? So I'm pretty close. So now I'm ready to trim. So now I have to secure the bottom of my chuck down. So down here, I'm gonna add some clay all the way around. So here, I'm just gonna moosh some big chunks of clay down because I don't want this chuck moving at all when I do this. Because if this chuck moves around, I'm going to I'm going to have to start the process maybe over again. The other thing I don't want to have happen is for this guy to flip out of here, right? So those are the two things that I'm most worried about is flipping out. So here now let's check. So when I trim, I have to take it easy. I cannot be super aggressive when I trim because this pot is really high up in the air. So this whole thing could just tip over, right? And, and I could lose everything. Or if I too aggressive when I trim, this whole pot can just tip out, right? So there's a couple different things that I gotta watch out for. So I want to use sharp tools and I wanna make sure hopefully that this isn't too dry. So, oh, now I'm gonna trim. So when I trim, I'm just gonna trim off this and I wanna continue this form all the way around. So you see how this form is sitting here. I wanna trim off this part and I wanna continue this curve into here. And I'm gonna trim a foot on here. So let's talk about where I'm probably, I'm just gonna guesstimate where I wanna put my foot right now, right about there. 
and there. So that'll be my foot. I'm just guesstimating my foot where I think it should be, but we'll figure that out when we're doing it, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is get out my Sureform and let's just sure have some Sureform fun, right? I love these tools. I use them all the time for trimming. And then we're just gonna use this today. We're using this one and this one does such a good job. And so I have to take it easy when trimming, right? So let's not use that one. That blade needs to be replaced. I remember that this one is a little bit sharper, so we'll use this one today. So that's why I like have multiples of the same tool or the tools that could do the same thing because these tools can do, um, I can use them kind of interchangeably, right? So if one blade is not quite sharp or something, I can fix that and, and I could just switch to the other one while I'm getting ready to repair the the other repair the blade. So there you can see all that clay is coming off. You can see I'm starting to get there, right? I gotta clean this clay out of this tool. It's a little bit sticky. So I like to trim these when they're a little bit more wet than normal. So that's when I like to trim these because it's easier for, it's, I don't have to press as hard. So if this were a bowl, I would probably wait to trim it a little bit longer, right? But because this is needs to be trimmed, because it's like this bottle vase form that um, I trim these while they're a little bit more wet. So you see that I, I've gotten it down to about where the foot is gonna start. So I kind of have been done using this tool. Now I'm gonna switch to a loop tool probably, because since this clay is, it's, I just know that this loop tool is probably gonna work. And so I'm gonna start defining the outside of this foot by trimming straight down right there. So here, let's get a good close-up view of that. And so now we're just gonna trim and I'm just gonna go straight down from here. You see, I use the edge of that tool and start to trim, just start going straight down. I know that it's a little bit up and downy right here, but that's okay. We'll be, I'm fine with that for right now. There we go, going down, going down, going down. So you see, I started to define the outside of that foot right there, right? And don't worry, I'm gonna straighten it all up in a second, but I just wanna rough out the foot. So that's looking pretty good. I can come back now with this tool. If I'm a little bit worried about how rough that looks, I can trim this side, you flip it around, trim in this side, oop, I gotta, there. So now I'm gonna trim off this part right here. So remember, you gotta take it easy with how much force you're using. Don't push too hard. You can see that sometimes I have my hand on the opposite side and I'm kind of trying to push back just a little bit to help hold it steady because this side is causing drag and pushing. So I kind of try to sometimes use a little bit of drag on the opposite side with my opposite hand. And that seems to help hold it in place a little better. So I'm trying to push down equally on both sides without causing too much friction. There we go. So you see I'm pushing down on the opposite side when I do this. You may have caught me doing that earlier too. So, so you see that this form now, I'm gonna try to connect this form here with this curve here. So the whole curve, right, makes sense. When you look at it from the side view, right, that this whole curve from here, 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 what I'm probably gonna do here is probably trim just a little bit of this off and into there. And luckily you see how clear, that's clear. I can see kind of a little bit how that curve there looks because of this clear plastic. So I'm gonna try to trim something that looks similar here. So it has like a the, the this part and then the curve down here looks about the same. So here we go. I'm using the opposite hand technique again on the trim, right? There we go, looking pretty good. So you see that I'm being gentle. When I trim these, you can't be very aggressive. So let's talk about another tool, right? I'm using a chuck, right? The other super popular tool is a Griffin grip. And I really like my Griffin grip, but I'm just kind of too lazy to get it out. Um, I And I like trimming this way. So, um, but if I had a bunch of bottles, like if I had 10 bottles or something to do, I probably would get out my Griffin grip because, and we'll do Griffin grip. I'll show you how to use that in another video, right? So, um, cause I have it sitting over there. Right? But if I'm just doing one bottle, I just use this technique. And the Griffin Grip is a special tool that kind of has these things, these cams that kind of that tighten up against your pot and help hold your pot in place. And you can trim just about anything with a Griffin Grip. Bowls, plates, cups. No, not really plates. Plates it doesn't really work great for, but you can do bowls and cups too. And things that have long necks like this. And that's the main thing about the Griffin Grip is I love using it for things that have long necks like this. All right. So there, we've got that pretty much down. And you can see that it's gotten a little wobbly because I think I knocked it, right, as I was trimming. So I'm defining the outside of this foot right now, I'm trying to clean that up. Now I'll clean this up. So I'm flip-flopping back and forth. 
kind of making sure that both sides look nice and trimmed and beautiful. Right there, I'm taking it easy. I can't be too aggressive here because if I'm too aggressive, right, this whole thing will flip off. So it's a little bit up and down. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna trim this level now, right? So it's a little bit off here. So I'm gonna probably switch to the, to the smaller tool. But, oh, right here, I'm gonna switch to the smaller tool to trim this part level. Here we go. So it's rocking around. So something's going on here. Let's see. So I'm going to moosh this. I'm kind of mooshing these sides down a little bit because I feel this trying to rock around a little bit. So mooshing, mooshing, just trying to make sure everything's settled. Feels okay. So here we go. So I'm just trying to trim this level because I don't want this to be, when I trim this level, everything will look much better. All right, it's almost there. So I'm gonna hold this down. I'm gonna put a little bit of downward pressure here to keep it from rocking around all over the place and then trim this level. So you see I'm trimming more from one side than the other because I want this to be a level bottom foot that from the way I stuck it in there. Oh, so it's much better now. There we go. Much better, happier. Yay, so that's looking pretty good. Then I'll come back and trim this square, make this look much better. And that'll make everything look much tidier and happier. There we go. And then I'll come back here and trim this part a little bit more. There. Trying to get the outside of this foot looking really good. Right? Okay. So I'll just trim it one more time. There we go. So that form is starting to look pretty good on the outside. And now I'm going to trim the inner part of this foot. So I trim these a lot like the way I trim my bowls. And the way how I throw these, right, the inside is flat. So I'm just going to trim this flat across here. This clay is a little bit grabby because it's so wet. So I'm just got to be really gentle here and as I trim. So normally I would probably wait to trim this till tomorrow or something because it's a little bit grabby, but it seems to be doing okay. There we go. But sometimes you just got to trim when you got time to trim. So that's why we're doing it today. So there we're trimming, trimming, trimming. Trimming, trimming, trimming. So you see how I'm starting to establish the inside of that foot right there. Let's go a little faster. And so you see I'm using this hand, my, my right hand now, to add a little bit of downward pressure to keep it from springing out. So you kind of have to do two things uh, at the same time. So it's a little bit wobbly. Not as secure in the chuck as it should be. How about that? Let's just feel it, what's going on. So it's this thing that's rocking back and forth. So it's my plastic container, which I never used before, is the thing that's rocking back and forth. But I think I got it. So let's get this a little bit trimmed down, just a little bit more. I thought the plastic container would be a brilliant idea because you guys could see the where the neck was and how the neck was oriented in the pot but it's not working out that way because it's a little bit the plastic container isn't quite as sturdy as it should be it's flexing a little bit i think as i trim so the plastic container i'm using is an old cd cover thing you know you get used to get the stacks of like 50 cds and so it's that cover that went over the top of a 50 cds there we go Right, so I'm getting close to the way I want. So this foot looks a little bit deformed. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes just trying to tidying up the foot here. There we go. So I want it to look really good and happy and everything. So there. So now I'm going to come back and round this part off. There we go. And I'll come back and round this part off like that. There we go. So now I'm just gonna come back in here and round this foot, whole foot off here. There. So I want a nice rounded and beautiful foot down here, right? So I'm getting the foot looking really good, locating the foot. Now I'm pretty sure that the foot is about the right size for what I want. This is looking pretty good. So now I've removed most of the clay that I wanna remove. Now I just wanna do some cleanup. I wanna clean up these lines here and clean up the, my trimming lines in there. So then I could switch back to my bigger trimming tool, which will leave less lines in there. So now 
And I'm just not trying to necessarily trim off as anything, but I'm just trying to get rid of some of those throwing those trimming lines. And then I'm going to come back with a metal rib here at the end and really clean it up or use something. So I can't even get this tool in here because it's a little bit too big. So maybe I could just use, um, I could use something like this because this clay is a little bit wet. I could use my rubber rib to try to clean this off. So here, let's go here and just see if we can smooth it off. No, nope, that's not working. So it's a little bit too stiff for that. So we'll use this thing like we did before. We'll go at that scrapey angle where I'm just trying to scrape it smooth, right? Because remember, we haven't done that down here yet. The one, there we go. So you see how it's starting to get really smooth and looking really smooth and beautiful. That's what we want. Right, and now I'm gonna lay it down and try to make it really smooth that way because that's what we want there too. Right, take your time, let it happen kind of naturally. You don't wanna to push too hard, right? Just let time and spinny action take care of it. That's why we have the wheel, right? The wheel in the first place allows us to work it like this and make these beautiful, beautiful surfaces. So I don't want it to look all trimmed down there. I want it to look nice and beautiful and thrown. So now that's looking better. And now I'm just going to take my finger because this inner part, the clay is just a little bit wet. I'm going to wet it down a little bit with my a wet little finger. And I could probably just round it off like that. And I could probably do that right here. Um, let's get my rubber rib out again. Where did that go? I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to use this to smooth this out inside of here to make this look really beautiful. Go. There we go. And then I'll use this to smooth that out. Now it's a little bit wavery, but once it stops, it looks fine. I think I just need to hit it just a little bit right here. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of this tool here to clean up the outside of that. There's just a little bit of a hard spot in my clay there. Right there, but I think it looks pretty good now. Let's take a different angle. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And before I flip it, I'm going to stamp it. So here's my chop, and I'm just going to use my chop in the bottom. I'm going to put it right there. So it's all smoothed out, looking all pretty good. I'm going to put it right there. This clay is pretty wet, so I don't have to push too hard. Like that. There we go. There's my chop. And let's pull it out and see how it looks. Ooh, it is stuck in there really good. So there we go. So there it is. Take a look. So that's with my trim bottom, right? Trim. I cleaned up the top. I trimmed the bottom. It has a pretty good continuous form, right? Goes right into the bottom just like that. That's what I want out of this pot right here. And it has a nice trim foot. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.